Svaka ideologija ima svoju filozofsku pozadinu, često puta na prvi pogled nevidljivu. Obično prvo postaju vidljivije njene posljedice, no ako se znade gdje i što tražiti, tada postaju vidljivi i sustavi i razmišljanja koji kasnije dovode do vidljivih zahvata. Suvremeno doba neoliberalizma i globalizacije raste ispred naših očiju. Kamo ono vodi? Odgovor na to pitanje možda se može naći u konceptima poput tehnokracija, transhumanizam, postindustrijsko društvo, postdemokratsko društvo. Iz tih naizgled abstraktnih koncepata moguće je da je proizlaze mnoge vidljive i naizgled nepovezane posljedice, poput GMO-a, kemijskih tragova, morgelona, geoinženjeringa, centralizacije financijskih i političkih moći u svijetu. Iz čega bi slijedilo da negdje u korijenu nisu toliko povezane. Jedan pogled na svijet tehnokracije i transhumanizma nudi poznati svjetski istraživač i aktivist i autor filmova Max Egan. I to ovdje, na rubu znanosti. Dobro večer. Max Egan, australski istraživač, aktivist i autor nezavisnog dokumentarnog filma Buđenje, u kojem pokriva mnoge kontroverzne teme s kojima se suočava čovečanstvo. Mnoge od njih danas se može okupiti pod zajedničkim nazivnikom, koji pak ima razne imena. Jedno od njih, jednako uobičajeno kao i ostala, je korporatizam. Što je korporatizam? Koji mu je cilj? Kad je i kako stvoren? Well, korporatizam u svojom kurnom formu je učinio kada je 1302 by a pope called Pope Bonifaci. Of course, we had a system of control that was in place a, a good many years before that, but the current corporate system that we now have was created by Pope Bonifaci in the year 1302 with the creation of the first express trust, which was called the Unum Sanctum Trust. This was a trust by which the Vatican basically claimed control of the earth. After it created the Unum Sanctum Trust, over the period of the next around about 175 years, it also created three more express trusts. The first one was called uh, Pontifex Romanus. It's either Pontifex Romanus or Romanus Pontifex. I always get them mixed up. But that trust basically came, claimed control of all property on the earth. The next trust it created was called the Attorney Regis Trust, which claimed control of all private property. And then the next trust was called Convocation, which claimed control of everybody's soul. And this is when we saw the introduction of birth certificates and all of this sort of stuff. And we saw the corporate structure that now controls the world was actually put into place. And it's been an ongoing progression since that time. And it's been going out right across Europe. It, it established the Crown Corporation in London, which it's set up basically to control the global financial system. It controls the global spiritual system through the Vatican, and it's kind of merged its tentacles out from there. But that, that's when the current system that we're, we're sort of enslaved to was, was put in place. Ako je naša znači počina teza da uh, postoji svjetska neka korporatistička struktura, koliko je danas daleko od makla u svojoj nekakvoj realizaciji te ideje u svjetskoj korporatističkoj državi? Spominjete ponekad da su i države danas tek korporacije, ništa više od toga. Well, states are only corporations. I mean, obviously, it's a very ongoing process and it's a very long, time-consuming process to take over the world by means of, of corporatism. But that's basically what we're seeing. They've done it through the implementation <coughs> of the central banking systems is how they've done it. That's what they've managed to do in each country. What we see uh, now with the war on terror is actually a, a bold move to go and put these, these banking systems in place in all sorts of countries because the axis of evil that was named by George W. Bush when he started his war on terror was actually every country that doesn't have a central bank. So that's how they've done it. They've, they've gone out and they've set up these central banking systems and these are basically enslaving all the countries to debt and, and all of this debt comes from the one source. It's all fictional, it's all contrived. We've seen what happened here in the Balkans. We've seen the, the, the system that you currently, or that you used to have here, the Yugoslavian system, the financial system, was a very stable, very secure, very honest monetary system. But we saw that collapse with the Balkan conflict, and we've seen all the countries that, that came out of the Balkan conflict imposed with their own central banks. And the one country that attempted to stay out of the EU, Croatia, now 
being forced into a, a situation of financial collapse where it's being forced to join the EU. So that's basically the mechanism that they've used to do it. And it's a very slow process. But that is what some people would term the New World Order, the Illuminati, the global system, whatever people want to call it. It's really a global corporation that's being put in place. Well, it's the corporate system that is being used to control everybody within the system anyway. Um. Piramida političkih struktura je danas dosta jasno vidljiva. Isto tako je, više nisu nepoznate niti mnoge e, analize financijskog svjetskog sustava. No također je zametno da postoji cijeli niz djelatnosti koje su na nekakvom rubu prihvaćanja. Očigledno su pred očima ljudi se zbivaju, međutim opet na neki način kako su kao u nekoj zoni sumraka. E, stalno se vode rasprave, postoji li to, ne postoji li. A baš su upravo te metode i djelovanja čini se najdirektnije vezane uz samog čovjeka, uz njegovo tijelo, uz njegove uh, ono, biološki i kemijski ustroj. Pa mogli bi se malo proći kroz uh, taj uh, sektor uh, sredstava kojima se pokušava kontrolirati ljudska percepcija, zdravlje i sl. Uh, mnogi ljudi na neki način uh, i autori spominju elektromagnetsku kontrolu, što nam danas nije strano. Svako je na neki način opremljen elektronski i tako. Otkuda biste vi krenuli kada bismo popričali o svim tim kemijskim, biološkim i elektronskim načinima invazije na čovjeka i uh, možda je baš elektromagnetska kontrola dobro mjesto za početi? Look, it's, a, it's, it's difficult to find a place to start. It's such a huge spectrum of control that's in place. You know, the, the human human consciousness and, and human society and the human species in general has been bombarded from so many different directions. But of course, electromagnetism is a huge part of it. I mean, when you look at your body, you are basically an electromagnetic being. You're an electrical being even more than you are a biological being. Your body, for example, is 85% water. The chemical makeup of your body is actually quite small, around about 15% of your body makeup. The rest of it is just water. Everything you experience within this biological computer that we call the human body is an electromagnetic experience. The fact that you can hear me talking to you, these are simply vibrations picked up by your eardrums that are sent down a series of neurons and wires and, and nerve fibers that are interpreted by the brain as electromagnetic signals. Touching the table and feeling the sensation of touch is an electromagnetic signal. Everything that you think, everything you experience is an electromagnetic signal interpreted by the brain. So if you can interfere with that signal, and you can start imposing your own programs. And if you, if you think of it, the body actually runs like a program. It actually runs like a biological computer that operates on electromagnetic frequencies. So it's very easy to intercept that. You could intercept the cornea, for example, and you could put visions in someone's eyes because when you, when you get vision in your eye, you're just getting light coming in and registering in the cornea. It's, it's being converted inside in your brain. It's being sent to your brain, which tells you what you see. All you have to do is interfere with that at the point where it, it reaches the nerve endings. The same with the ears. All you have to do is interfere with it. So I believe this is why they are giving people expensive technology so much. I mean, you can get a, a, one, a, hundred, a thousand dollar mobile phone on a one dollar plan if you take it out on a, on a two-year plan. And it isn't because they want you to have expensive technology, they want you to have the mobile phone. And we've seen this whole electromagnetic grid being built up around us, and I think it's having an extreme effect on the psyche. Even television, anything that flickers, any lights that you have on, you'll find they all flicker. Street traffic lights, even car tail lights, if you, if you video them, you'll find There's a flicker rate on all of these lights. This again is sending an electromagnetic signal to your brain. It shuts down the corpus callosum, which prevents your left and right brain talking to one another and keeps you very disconnected from reality. This is how they've done it. They've used so many means. They've done it through biological means, through chemical means. The fluoride in our, in our water supplies, which shuts down our pineal gland, stops us from experiencing a lot of higher senses, a lot of the things that do exist outside visible light the things the shaman talk about that exist outside the five sense reality. We're disconnected from all of these things and the, the system of control that they use to do it is absolutely massive. It's incredibly massive. And I believe this also relates to the smart meters that have been put around the planet. It relates to the satellite grid. All of it is about electromagnetic control. It really is. Even civilization itself, I mean, civilization that we've come up with is itself a, a, a system of control. I don't see why we would have ever come up with the type of civilization we currently have if it was not about control. So it's it's being bombarded everywhere. We're absolutely saturated in it from, from all angles. 
Po pitanju utjecaja i želje da se čak promijeni biološka struktura živih bića, što su pokazali eksperimenti na štakorima sa elektromagnetskim zračenjima? U kojoj mjeri ona mogu utjecati na živa bića? Well, electromagnetics can affect people in all sorts of ways and the, the test that you're talking about is very significant because what they did was they actually injected no particulates into rats and then they exposed the rats to an electromagnetic signal which caused these nanoparticulates to switch the genes of the rats on and off. So this shows that they can control genes by imposing an electromagnetic signal over a nanoparticulate. This is very, very significant research. So, and they're showing that electromagnetics can control biology. You simply have to put a vector in there. You have to put an interface in there, which the nanotechnology is in this, in this instance. But like I said, everything you experience is an electromagnetic signal. Everything is electromagnetic. We have remote controls that can be used to switch channels on televisions. We have wireless phones. We have wireless technology everywhere. Why would we believe for a minute that we are not being affected by this wireless technology when we are electromagnetic beings. Yeah. And that's the thing. And they're showing you with these tests that they've done on these rats, with the simple introduction of programmable nanoparticulates into a biological organism, they can create genetic changes in that organism using radio waves. So you're seeing this whole system being put in place right around the earth. Spominjali ste naravno da naše oči prihvaćaju svjetlost koja se onda dekodira u razne slike. Postoji li negdje mjesto u toj slagalici za uh, određene postupke vezane uz uh, žarulje koje su prisutne zadnjih uh, godinu, dvije, tri, uh, gdje se očito vidi nekakva jaka politička volja i želja da se iz nekog razloga uklone starinske žarulje od um, one dvije, tri kune sa relativno uh, ža, sa žarnom niti i slično i uvode se nove štedne žarulje, pa u ovom kontekstu ovog što pričate nekako mi se čini da uh, se tu mogu naći poveznice, opet je svjetlost u pitanju, elektromagneto zračenje, ko zna kakve frekvencije. Imate li kakvih stavova vezani uz to? Absolutely, absolutely. The new CLR light bulbs, mm -hmm. the curly light bulbs that people are being forced to use, absolutely they produce dirty electricity and I believe these could be used as a means of influencing people within their range, within their frequency range. Um, and, and, and you always know when they, they make you use something, when something becomes part of an agenda and becomes mandatory, then it's part of the agenda. It, it's, it's being used for a purpose. Now these light bulbs that, that we're getting now, these new energy saving light bulbs are incredibly toxic. They produce dirty electricity and they're also full of mercury. If you break one in your home, you're supposed to get a hazmat team to come and clean your home out. There was a woman in the United States broke a light bulb. It cost her $2,000 to have her house cleaned for a broken light bulb. I mean, this is the sort of uh, toxicity these things carry. And of course they're part of the agenda because if they weren't part of the agenda, they wouldn't make them mandatory. And there are far, far better means. You can get halogen light globes. You could, you could actually create light globes that would probably last. I mean, that would be an interesting thing to do with our technology. We don't ever seem to create anything to last. We make everything breakable. And of course, these light bulbs contain an incredible amount of toxins. I was recently in Gaza, and I'm actually seeing these curly light bulbs being used out on the street to power the street lights. I'm seeing them being thrown on rubbish tips and just being left there to break and, and go into the environment. So they're going to cause an enormous amount of damage. And I believe they are affecting us electromagnetically. And I would suggest this is why the smart meter grid is being put in place as well. We're seeing this right around the planet. And this isn't just to read what's going on in your house. These are big wireless electromagnetic grids that are being put in place. And again, as I've said, we are an electromagnetic being. So we need to pay attention to what's being put around us. Zadnjih godina se čak povelo nešto rasprave o jednoj pojavi koja je itekako vidljiva svima, dovoljno samo da pogledaju u nebo. Naravno, riječ je o tragovima oko kojih se vode rasprave. Jesu li to kemijski tragovi ili su to kondenzacijski tragovi, pa se tako i zovu kontrelovi, kemtrelovi i sl. Međutim, svatko, a to nije teško provjeriti, ko si ikad dao malo truda, ako promatra te tragove koje se prostiru u nekim mrežama s kraja na kraj horizonta, može uočiti kako su oni zapravo satima, vremenska komponenta je bitna, satima polako šire, dok se ne pretvori u bijelu maglicu koja prekrije cijelo nebo. To ovako govorim opisno jer je doista lako svakom provjeriti tko iziđe i ponekad baci pogled na nebo. I znači u tom slučaju zdravim razumom možemo odbaciti ideje od konizacijskim tragovima koji inače ostaju iza zrakoplova u nekim okolnostima, možda malo duže, ali prije ili kasnije kao vodina para nestanu. Daleko od toga se mogu širiti i prekrivati cijelo nebo jednom bijelom maglicom. E sad, ti chemtrailovi su vidljivi, na jednoj razini 
postoje rasprave jesu li oni doista tragovi uobičajani aviona ili nešto novo na nebu u zadnjih deset godina, a onda neki ljudi idu korak dalje pa se pitaju čemu oni služe, što je nađeno u njima i zbog čega se uopće radi takva operacija masivnih razmjera. Kako je vaše mišljenje o tome? Well, look, they're definitely spraying chemicals in the skies, and the governments even admit this. I mean, there's been debate about whether these are simply jet exhausts or whether there's actual spraying going on on, on many circles for a very long time. But the government is actually admitting that they're spraying now. You can look up the uh, National Study for Geoengineering that was released by the UK House of Commons. They admit that they're doing it. They call it geoengineering or climate remediation. They claim that it's being done to protect us from global warming anthropogenic global warming, which I don't, that's, that's a whole nother show, <laughs> anthropogenic global warming, I don't buy into that at all. But what we're seeing with these, these trails is, is, like you say, massive amounts of chemical spraying going on in the sky. When I was a child, these jets didn't leave contrails like this. They didn't leave these huge streaks across the sky, so something's changed. What has changed? Well, what we're doing is we're looking at soil samples, we're looking at water samples, and we're also looking at tissue samples and blood samples and urine samples from people and we're finding uh, elevated amounts of barium, aluminium and strontium in samples that we're getting from everywhere. And something else that we're finding is nanoparticulates in these, in these samples. Now these nanoparticulates will grow in a petri dish and they're very, very remarkable devices. They're like a cross between the three type of life forms that we have on the earth. We have, basically we have eukarya, which are complex life forms, which are capable of, of internal cells and in, uh, complex substructure within the cells. We are eukaryotic, plants, trees and animals are eukaryotic. And the other forms of life we have are bacteria, which are very, um, very easy to damage, very tiny but very easy to hurt, which is why we cook and freeze our food. And we have eukarya, which are very, very robust, I mean, I mean archaea, sorry, which are very robust, which live in volcanoes, live in the ice shelf, live in lava flows. And what we're seeing in these nanoparticulates is that they are like a cross between all three life forms. So this is almost like a new life form. And we're finding these in samples we're getting from everywhere. So the question becomes, where are these coming from? What's the common denominator? And the only common denominator we can find is the chemtrails, is the spraying in the sky. Because we're finding these elevated amounts of barium and strontium and aluminium in, in lakes that are isolated, man-made lakes that have been recently, recently formed, that are on hilltops with forests around them, away from highways, away from industry. We find that after a few years, these uh, lakes have incredibly elevated levels of aluminium and barium. So where is it coming from? It has to be coming from the atmosphere. The only thing that's changed in our atmosphere over the last few decades is the chemical spraying we're seeing in the sky, the so-called contrails that people call them. My father actually ran an airport and I used to spend a lot of time at the airport with him and he used to point out clouds to me and go through the whole lot with me. We used to get very excited when we saw a jet leave a contrail when I was a, a child because these are very, very rare. But now we see almost all jets leave contrails almost all the time. So something has very much changed. And I believe that this is where we're finding all of these things coming from. I believe that it is real. And it, it, like I said, governments are admitting it themselves that they're spraying. The question is, do you believe what they're telling you about why they're spraying? And if they are spraying for climate remediation or geoengineering to protect us from global warming, why are we finding these heavy metals and dioxins and toxins and nanoparticulates in the chemtrails? Is there a hidden agenda behind this that they're not telling us about? I would suggest that there is. Since when has government really told us the truth about anything? Kada pričamo o nanočesticama i općenito toj nekakvoj novoj vrsti tehnologije još nedovoljno prepoznatoj, zadnjih pa nekakvih 5-6 godina, možda i duže, se počeo pojavljivati jedan pojam za kojeg sam iz početka čuo u knjigama s one strane oceana. To je pojam morgelona, jedne neobične bolesti. Međutim, u zadnjih pola godine, godinu, na moju žalost i neugodno iznenađenje nazvalo me nekoliko stvarno ljudi zabrinutih iz reke, bilo je slučajeva iz Novog Sada i drugdje, koji su opisivali slične simptome te pojave za koju zapravo se danas nekako čak malo izmiče i klasifikaciji. Očigledno da bi se tu možda moglo raditi o nekakvoj nanotehnologiji zbog nekih specifičnih karakteristika. Kako biste vi ukratko opisali što su to morgeloni, neki zove to bolešću morgelons, i kako se manifestiraju za početak? Morgellons is like uh, lesions or sores that people are getting on their skin. They're like open sores and they're, they're finding that they're, they're weeping and they're 
exuding fibres. Some people are actually finding very, very tiny metallic devices in there as well. What we're seeing if we take these fibres out and put them under a microscope is exactly what I'm growing in petri dishes. See, what, what, what we're seeing is that we can get tissue samples from uh, people that don't display any symptoms of Morgellons. We can get blood samples, probably get blood samples from you and tissue samples from you. We can put them in a petri dish, we can culture it and we can grow these same fibres that look a lot like Morgellons. So what it would appear is that Morgellons is people who are, who their bodies are rejecting the nanoparticulates that are coming down in the chemtrails. Whereas most people seem to be integrating these nanoparticulates. Most of us are integrating them because they're in everything. I mean, if they're being sprayed in, in chemicals in the sky, then they're in everything. And they even tell you what they want to do. They, they tell you that they, they wish to merge humankind with machine. There was recently a film that came out called Transcendent Man by a man called Ray Kurzweil. He talked about how he wishes to merge humankind with machine and they intend to do it with nanotechnology. They say that soon nanotechnology will infuse everything, all the rocks, the trees, the plants, everything will be infused with intelligent nanotechnology. Well, if they intend to do this, how do they intend to do it? What would be the delivery system? You would have to use something like aerial spraying. So this would appear to be what they're doing. But like I said, we, we are growing Morgellons syndrome in a petri dish from people who do not display symptoms of Morgellons. So Morgellons is, is almost like the canary in the coal mine. Morgellons is the early warning signal, I believe. And we're getting reports of Morgellons in Australia. You're getting it here in Croatia. You're getting it all across America. But it's only certain people that are getting it. Of course, mainstream medicine and mainstream science says it's fictional. People are making it up. They're making up these sores they have on their body. Na koji način je moguće proglasiti fikcijom nešto što se može vidjeti u stvari kao što zapravo svatko može promijeriti na internetu, postoji puno slika. Kakva su objašnjenja iza toga? Što zapravo, na koji način se može reći da nešto što je vidljivo zapravo proizvod našte? Well, what, what we're hearing from these doctors is they're saying, look, people must have seen this on the internet and then they got a sore on their body and they got one of their pieces of clothing and they rubbed fibres into it. So it's got fibres coming out of it and people do this sort of stuff. They're all crazy and they come in, they claim they've got nanoparticulates growing out of their body, but really what they've done is they've rub their pullover on, on a wound. That's what they're saying. That's what the doctors are saying. Kako, što opisuju so, ljudi koji pate od morgerona? Kakve simptome? Well, they're very painful. They're very painful lesions. Mm -hmm. And like I said, fibers kind of growing out of these sores on your hands. Mm -hmm. they, they have a very, very difficult time getting them to, to go away. I don't know anyone that's been able to heal them. There is reports of uh, using a certain sap from a gum tree in Australia that I believe is, is making them clear up. But whether it's making them clear up or whether it's just taking away the symptom is another thing because if these are actually nanoparticulates that are inside people's bodies, well, what are they doing on a biological level? What are they doing to our DNA? How are we being genetically modified? And that's what appears to be happening is that the entire planet and everybody and everything on it is being genetically modified by the people at the top who we would term the elite. They're doing it by changing the chemical structure of everything, changing the genetic structure of everything through GM food, through additives that they're putting into the environment, through fluoride, and now through nanotechnology. It's all leading towards this, this transhumanist agenda. And it's really quite interesting. And Morgellons is, is the giveaway. Morgellons is, is the real giveaway because like I said, you can grow this in a Petri dish. And when you look at the GM agenda and you look at the chemtrails and you look at harp and you look at the electromagnetic uh, grid that's been put in place none of it really makes a lot of sense by itself but when you consider the possibility that chemtrails contain programmable nanoparticulates then it all falls into place it all makes sense you can understand why they would be giving vaccinations to certain sections of population to set up certain genetic environments within certain sections of the population. You would explain why the elite would be spraying themselves. That's a big question people always ask. If chemtrails are real, why would they be spraying themselves? Well, it's because they want nanotechnology. They want transhumanism. But what genetic environments are they setting up within themselves, which is different to what they're setting up within the general population? Because the general population is subject to GM food. We're subject to electromagnetic distortion and frequencies. We're subject to all of these smart light bulbs that they're putting everywhere, all of the grid that they're putting in place. We are exposed to more things and different things 
to what they are exposed to. So it explains why they would be doing it all this way. And it's suddenly, it's a piece of the puzzle that makes all the rest of it suddenly make sense if, if you consider the possibility that these nanoparticulates are actually there in the, in the spraying. Spomenuli ste HARP. Prije 10-15 godina pojavile su se prve knjige o tom postrojenju koje se tad gradilo samo na Aljasci i nešto se nagađalo, nešto je bilo i u javnosti dostupnih patenata koji su pokazali da se doista radi na idejama razvijanja nekakvog klimatskog oružja i sl. U zadnjih par godina mogli smo čuti optužbe od znači, premijera čak određenih zemalja. Znači, pričamo o visokoj politici, to više nisu nekakve priče koje se pišu po nekakvim čudnovatim knjigama, koje su optuživali neke zemlje, konkretno Ameriku u tom slučaju, da su koristili HARP. To smo čuli uh, od predsjednika Venezuele, pa se govorilo o napadima takvim na Kinu i Haiti. Evo, u zadnje vrijeme prije koji mjesec iranski predsjednik je također optužio Amerikance da sa Harpom su stvorili sušu u velikom dijelu Irana. Na neki način u trenutku kada međusobno šefovi država počinju barata takvim pojmovima, a čak i prije toga smo imali situaciju gdje su se u nekim evropskim državama donijeti zakoni da se ne koristi geomagnetsko oružje, znači, to bi značilo da zapravo postoje čim postoje zakoni da ga se zabrani. Kako je vaše mišljenje o vezi Harpa i chemtrailova i svega drugog, može li se to također staviti u jedan kontekst ili je to isključivo oružje koje služi tome da nije stvori potres, tsunami ili sušu? Look, I think HARP is, is multi-platform, same as the chemtrails. I mean, the chemtrails can be used to deliver all sorts of chemicals, barium, aluminium, strontium, nanoparticulates. Um, we've found red blood cells in them, you know, desiccated erythrocytes, all sorts of stuff. And it's the same with HARP. You know, when you think of the world being an electromagnetic grid, all life on it functioning electromagnetically, HARP is capable of doing almost anything. And, and as you say, the fact that there are world leaders who are openly stating, we believe that you created this earthquake with your electromagnetic device, this is, this is huge for people to be saying this. People that are holding such positions of power in the world to be standing up and saying, look, this technology is real. But people in Western societies don't believe it's real because they didn't read it in Science Monthly. It wasn't reported on the news because they think if it's real, the television will tell them that it's real. And really, I mean, the television, Western media, it, it's used to, to brainwash and propagandize people and indoctrinate them into a certain way of, of thinking. It doesn't give them news at all in any way, shape or form. HARP, I believe, is, is capable of, of, of so many things. And yeah, HARP is another indication that the earth is being changed. The earth is being terraformed into something else. The environment is being changed, the genetic environment is being changed. All of it is being changed right under our noses and we're not really paying attention because we're too caught up in the television. HARP is, is an insidious system and when people, when it was turned on, people thought it, it might just create uh, a chain reaction that would suddenly destroy the earth. And the scientists who created it didn't know if that would happen or not and yet they turned it on anyway because they just wanted to find out. You know, so this, this suggests that it's like mad scientists. It's like watching a, a monster movie or something. I mean, these people are not sane. You simply don't act this way if you are. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, when, when you think of the world as an electromagnetic grid and everything on it is electromagnetic, heart plays a huge role mm. in influencing mm. the sphere here. Dobro, već ste spomenuli i uh, cijepljenja. Eto, nedavno se svijetom, je do, u svijetu je dosta postala popularna rečenica Bila Gejca koja je rekao da sa dobrim cijepljenjem možemo smanjiti populaciju planeta. Uh, u kojoj mjeri uh, postoje naravno jake indicije da je depopulacija, odnosno smanjenje broja stanovnika na zemlji, dio plana, to je dokumentirano u raznim dokumentima od MSN 200, Henry Kissinger pa nadalje. Uh, koji bi bio tome cilj i na koje načine se to zapravo misli napraviti. Well, vaccination would be a, a huge uh, opportunity for people to create a population reduction. And vaccination, I believe, has been used to do that very much. Bill Gates really let the cat out of the bag with that statement. With a good population plan, we can reduce the population by, you know, 12 or 15%, I think he said. With what vaccination plan? With the, with the vaccination mm -hmm. program. And you think, well, hang on a minute, aren't vaccinations supposed to preserve life? And here is he talking about the fact that it's going to reduce the population. And people just, just lap it up, they just watch it, and they don't pay attention to what mm -hmm. was actually said. Oh, with a good vaccination program, we can, we can save the world, is, is the way it came across. But 
they want to save the world by reducing the population because they put the blame on us. Apparently we're the problem, we're like a disease. It can't be the corporate system that we're forced to abide by, the legal parameters that, that protect that corporate system, which is being used to destroy the planet, they've got to blame the people. And so that you can save the planet by putting in dirty light bulbs in your, in your house, but we still let the corporations run amok. And vaccinations play a huge role in this. And I believe the vaccinations also, as I said, they set up a genetic environment in certain sections of the population. So they create certain genetic codes in those sections of the population. And I think that vaccinations are what are also being used to spread, um, to spread AIDS. I don't, I don't think that AIDS has anything to do with HIV, to be honest. I've, I've done a bit of research into this, and I think that um, what you find is that most of the population, or a good percentage of the population, is actually HIV positive, that HIV doesn't cause AIDS, that what does cause AIDS and what kills the people is the drugs they give them to treat the HIV. So again, it's a depopulation program, that's all it is. And I don't even think the world's overpopulated, I just think it's badly managed. Mm -hmm. I think that we could support the population we've got quite easily if we adopted practices such as permaculture, if we managed our societies properly and actually had societies that were designed to support humanity and to support the environment rather than supporting the economic model at the expense of humanity and the environment, which is what we do. We always operate within systems of permanent growth to support a model which is essentially fiction. It's just numbers on a screen. It isn't real. The economy isn't real. What's real is the people within the economy. That's what's real. So we need to adjust our perspective on these things and, and, and create a society that, that serves us a little bit better, I think. Ovdje pričamo o nečemu što jedan autor opisao kao nekakvom željom tehnosfere da nadvlada biosferu i pretvori je u sebe u stvari, jer biosfera se sastoji od nekakvog beskonačnog broja iznimaka koji su usklađeni, njome vlada nekakav čudni samoorganizirajući princip, dok tehnosfera znamo, voli kockice, brojke, pogledamo naše zgrade, automobile i sve drugo. U tom kontekstu se danas čak i dosta priča o GMO tehnologiji, međutim u javnoj areni najčešće se trudi opisati kao bezazlenu ili kao tek nešto što možda ima mali rizik, ali to se ne može imiriti s koristima koje donosi i slično. Kakve su one informacije koje o GMO dolaze, a koje nećemo naći baš u svakim novinama, osim je to nedavno jedna vijest pobudila veliku pažnju u svijetu, jedno francusko istraživanje, ali inače, koje su stvari ciljevi, planovi i opasnosti GMO-a prema vašem viđenju? Well, what we're finding is that the tests they've done with, with rats and mice, and I've got a lot of links to this on, on my website, thecrowhouse.com, some of the tests they've done with, with mice that have been fed GMO corn, after three generations they're unable to breed. Things like this, we're finding uh, massive deformations in the, in the genitalia, of creatures that, that consume GM, GMO food for three generations. It always takes three generations. And we haven't had three generations of GM food on the planet here for peoples to consume. So we won't really know until a little bit further down the line. But all, all of these systems are, are, are simply little compartments you know, that, that have got to be looked at and, and put all together. You know, it's all, it's all compartmentalised, the whole grid. And the whole transhumanist agenda, the GM agenda, the genetic modification of the whole planet that's going on, it's all part and parcel with this. It's all together. And I'd suggest that um, even just go to my website and look at some of the, the studies that I've got there in the links and articles on GM food and, and some of the things that it does. I believe it's been outlawed through most of Europe, which is a good thing. We've had it uh, thrown out of Pakistan recently. They've, they've burnt all of their, their GMO corn crops because they're realising the damage that this does. But it's, it's just, again, it's a genetic modification of the whole environment. And it's being done on, on incremental levels, little bits that people don't notice. And it might look good and it might look attractive and it might look like a, a, a great new boon for society, but when you step back and you put it on the bigger picture, you see how it's all just a system of control that's being put in place. More and more control. You know, compartmentalise things more and more, digitise things more and more, put things more in a grid-like pattern more and more because it's far more easy to control humanity that way. Far more easy to control consciousness, to stop consciousness evolving to what it could be, to prevent the humankind being what they could be. It's all about control. Everything that they do is about control. Postoji cijela filozofska pozadina iza korporatizma ili novog svjetskog poredka o čemu pričamo i uvijek je zamotano u neke tajanstvene pojmove za koje danas već možemo čuti kako ih izgovaraju nekakvi vrhunski svjetski priznati, ne znam, filozofi, znanstvenici, pa čak i političari koji imaju nekakvu kao 
širu znanstvenu podlogu. Recimo, jedan od njih je vrlo popularan smjer transhumanizma kojeg ste spomenuli. Znači, nešto što nadilazi ljudski rod. Potom imamo pojam post-demokratskog društva. Što bi to moglo značiti? Ne želim niti razmišljati. Post-industrijskog društva, znači kad stavimo to na hrpu da vidimo, nema industrije, nema demokracije, nema više ni ljudskosti, a sve to naravno uvijek povezano jednim pojmom koji se zove tehnokracija. Znači opet imamo jedan pojam u kojem vladaju neki ljudi koji bi navodno trebali biti jako vješti znanstvenici da ne bismo padali u zamke korumpiranih političara. U stvari to je ta nekakva nalik koja je staroj igri, jednog sakriš, drugog pokažeš, pa tako u nedogled. U kojoj mjeri je filozofija transhumanizma prožeta kroz korporatizam i općenito svi ti pojmovi tehnokracija, postindustrijsko doba, postdemokratskog doba i koja je u stvari filozofska nekakva podloga jer svaka ideologija, pa tako i ideologija korporatizma u svojoj pozitivnjem određenu filozofiju. Koja bi to ovdje bila i što zapravo sadrže ta ideja transhumanizma koja nam se predstavlja isključivo kao poboljšanje ljudskog tijela i prodržavanje čovjekovog života kroz mehaničke načine? Well, transhumanism and, and technocracy, I mean, as a game, the philosophy is, is again control. That, that's the philosophy. You can really sum it up in that one word. But see, what they've done, I mean, if you look into shamanism, you'll find that we actually have, as I was mentioning earlier, we have a lot of higher senses. We have a lot of things that exist outside visible light. There's a lot more to reality than what we can perceive to be there. And what they've done is they've limited our understanding of what's actually there by keeping us locked into a left brain education, shutting down our corpus callosum, feeding us um, biologically inferior products which have shut down our pineal gland and, and locked down our senses. And so we can't access all of these higher realms. And so then what they do is they, they bring us technology to replace these higher senses. It's like if you're a Lamborghini driver and I want to sell you my Honda, you're not likely to buy my, my Honda from me unless I come and steal your Lamborghini first. And then if you've got to get to work, well, you're probably going to buy my Honda. And that's what they've done. They've stolen our Lamborghini and they're trying to sell us their Honda. And we're all buying into it. For the most part, people are buying into it. They think technology is wonderful. They think technocracy is wonderful. But really, it's, it's a dehumanization of humankind. It's almost like the, the birth of a new human, the transhuman where technology and, and biology is merged together. And that might seem like a good thing to people, but if you're able to communicate to your friends telepathically through technology so you don't need to pick up your mobile phone anymore, what it essentially means is that your thoughts are being monitored. You know, so this is, this is a way of monitoring the human system. It's a way of interfering with the human system, with the human biology. And if you think of the, the human body as a, a biological computer, it's also a way of hardwiring a back door into the body computer. So therefore you can control it any way you want. You can send signals to and fro. Even people that have microchips, they can go past a microchip scanner and they can get read and they can write to the chip on that scanner as well. So they can write new information to these chips that people are getting put into them. So what information are they putting in there? What programs are being run? Would you be able to put uh, an element within a chip which would cause people to spontaneously have a heart attack at 65 when they've outlived their usefulness? I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities that could be incorporated into transhumanism. And I believe that the way transhumanism is being implemented is, is from the inside out. A lot of people think, oh, it's going to be microchips, it's going to be plantons, it's going to be add-ons, eye patches, earpieces, all this sort of stuff, like the Borg, like we see on, on television. But what if there's another way? What if they can do it by introducing nanotechnology and a specific in genetic environment into the system and they can change you from the inside out, recode your DNA? There's, there's things that we're finding in, in some of these samples that we're, in the Morgellons uh, dishes that we're growing. We're finding things called nanoarrays. Nanoarrays are devices which are used for hybridizing DNA. So this is what's going on. This is the, the transhumanist agenda is to merge man with machine and create uh, basically the Borg is what they're talking about. They want to create a race like the Borg. Even in the film Transcendent Man, they talked about when we actually go to space, what we will be doing is sending out nanotechnology infused with artificial intelligence so we can go out and harness other things out in the universe to improve the overall intelligence of man. What they're talking about is sending nanoparticulates out there to assimilate the rest of the universe so it all becomes us, so we become this machine god that the transhumanist believes we should become. I believe that we are perfection anyway. We are capable of so many things. 
reality could be very, very different from what it is if we were left to our own devices, if we were allowed to use our imagination properly, if our education system actually educated rather than indoctrinated. The world could be very, very different. And it's, it's going to hell in a handbasket and it's doing it at very, very rapid speed because people aren't paying attention. They're not paying attention to the power that they have within themselves and they're allowing this false reality to be imposed on them, this, this merging with machine, which is all about control. Because once you merge with a machine, it gives the ability for someone external to yourself to control the organism mm -hmm. which is yourself. So it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Tu postoji jedan novi pojam koji možemo staviti kao dobar opis, a to je mentalitet roja. U stvari, radi se o tome da kada pričamo o tome da smo sve već vidjeli u SF filmovima, pa se često mogu učit kritike, a to si pokupio iz SF filma, najčešće se radi u stvari o nečem što je se zove prediktivno programiranje. Stvari se stavljaju u razne filmove i onda kada jednom dođu za 10-20 godina kod nas, na neki način nam se čini da je to logičan slijed, da je tako trebalo biti, da smo to već vidjeli. A upravo Borg, kojeg se naravno su proslavili zvijezdane staze, predstavlja taj mentalitet roja u kojoj očigledno kroz taj korporativni sustav na neki način ljudi ulaze jer dogod ljudi ne prihvaćaju da bi ono što im se nameće dotle mentalitet roja neće niti postojati. Međutim, u trenutku kada će svijest biti na toliko sužena u tolikoj mjeri da zapravo neće biti bitna, bitan pojedinac nego cijelina, na putu smo da imamo jedan mentalitet roja. Zanimljivo je što su sve te velike osvajačke i kolonijalne sile tijekom zadnjih par stoljeća gdje god su dolazile sustavno zatirale domaće tradicije. Pogotovo su im na meti bili lokalni, da tako kažemo, stručnici, lokalni znanstvenici zvani šamani. Što su to šamani imali da su bili takav trn u oku engleskim, portugalskim, španjolskim, nizozemskim i svim drugim kolonizatorima? Koji su u stvari neka vrsta, neću reći preteće, nego korporatista onog doba? Well, the, the thing is, really, when you look at this corporate system that controls us, I mean, the rabbit hole goes so deep. If we were to even just dismantle this system and, and bring down the banking cartels, have mass arrests like some people are talking about, change the money system, you know, it's, it's still not going to really change things because when you really start going down the rabbit hole and look at how disconnected from the earth we actually are, it, it, we see that it, it's almost an insurmountable hurdle to get us back to what we should be. What you find in the shamanistic traditions is that they still have this connection to earth. I was recently in South America and I did a, a series of ayahuasca ceremonies in South America at a place called Tierra Vida. And um, what I got from those ceremonies was a, a, a massive connection to the earth mother. Massive, absolutely incredible. And when you see the system that we've got, the, this, the structure of our society, it's very it's very mechanical, it's very machine-like, it's very disconnected from what we are as natural human beings. And so this is why the shamanistic traditions were such a threat to this society. This is why the Crown Corporation, the Vatican system, went to such an extraordinary amount of effort to wipe these cultures out. You know, they, they created the pirates, they created the East India Trading Company that went out and when it found these shamanistic cultures, it decimated them. And to even talk about paganism or pantheism or the knowledge of the plants, was punishable by death because this is the biggest threat to this system that is faced. One of the last areas that we still have this knowledge is in the upper reaches of the Amazon, in Peru and the upper reaches of Brazil. And I think it's imperative that we preserve this culture because the, the, the restoration of shamanistic traditions is what could save the earth, it really could. And, and like I said, the, the disconnection that we have from the earth is, is so massive that, that people would not even believe how reality actually works, where, where to jump over and hit them in the face. It's, it's very, very different to what we actually think. Da, ovdje moramo napraviti čak jedan kvantni skok do novog shvaćanja stvarnosti. Naime, dogod odvajamo stvarnost od nas samih, mi smo još uvijek u nekakvom istom uh, očištu. Međutim, jednom ste rekli da smo mi svi samo perspektive. To naravno nije, nije potpuno nova misao, ono, da, da ne postoji istina, nego samo perspektive. Međutim, uh, ta rečenica da smo mi svi samo perspektive, kakve ona ima veze sa iskustvima na Ahuaski i sa uopće načinom da čovjek poboljša svoje mjesto i zapravo svijet oko sebe na neki način da ne postane mrav ili pčela u roju, nego ipak ono za što je očito stvoren da bude? Well, look, I think understanding that what you are is your perspective is incredibly important. I think that's one of the things that's been used to divide us so much. 
And, you know, they're offering us a culture where we, we can become all one, but it will be the Borg version of the one where we're all controlled. But really, we are all one anyway. If you look at basic human biology, if you look at the work of people such as Bruce Lipton, you realise that your, your consciousness isn't local to your body. It exists in the field outside of your body. You literally download it into yourself. And you, from that download, you have the unique perspective of reality that is you. And that's what makes you different from me, is your perspective of reality. You're the centre of your own universe right there. I'm the centre of my own universe here. But our universes are interacting at the moment. The same with the cameraman, the same with the audio crew, the same as everybody who's watching. All of these, inter all of these universes are currently interacting. So there's your multiverse. There's all your parallel universes that exist. Each one of us is the centre of one of these universes. And what makes you unique is your perspective. No one else will ever have the perspective of reality that you have. And that's what makes you perfect because you're perfect at being yourself, which is what you came here to do. And, and what you're here to do is to experience yourself, to find yourself, to experience what you are and what you are capable of, and see what the legacy is that you leave behind. See, that's, that's your purpose in life, is to leave behind a legacy. How did you improve the world by your presence in it? Once you can start viewing things this way, and you can see that what makes you unique is your perspective, and what makes you unique is your perspective, and it's the same with everybody, all the barriers break down between you and, and the other people. You start to realise that we are all connected. This is what I felt in, in the ceremony in Peru. I felt the connection to everything, to everyone. And I've done this before in meditation experiences. I've had phenomenal meditation experiences where I've connected with the field and I've, I've felt everybody and everything all at once. So I know that we are connected. We are all one, by our, but we are each completely unique and individual at the same time. And it's easy that we can be both of those things, which may seem very opposed to each other, but it's easy for us to be those two things when you really understand how reality works. Zanimljivo je da u našem tom kemijsko-biološkom sustavu mi cijelo vrijeme lučimo one iste trave pomoću kojih razne biljike nam daju sposobnost da kao maknemo barijeru ono što bi se mogli nazvati fizičkim svijetom ili kakvim god drugim pogrešnim izrazom. Ta slavna već molekula koju zovu duhovnom molekulom DMT često puta se opisa kao neki interfejs za komunikaciju s prirodom koju životinje naravno imao kao neki svoj instinkt i slično, pa znaju kad dolazi tsunami i tako dalje. U kojoj mjeri su ljudima zapravo, mislim, situacija je takva da su najopasnije droge zapravo dopuštene, kemijske, alkohol i slično, dok se iz nekog razloga biljke koje mijenjaju tako stanje svijesti, bez obzira što ne štete ljudima, nalaze isto na popisu zabranjenih tvari i slično. Na koji način bi čovjek mogao otvoriti tu svoju komunikaciju s prirodom. Jedan od načina su znači te biljke i DMT koje bi onako imamo u sebi, ali nije aktivan iz nekog razloga. Uvijek se ljudi pitaju što bih ja tu mogao napraviti. Pa što biste mi vi odgovorili? Well, I would recommend changing your diet. I mean, you really, really have to change your diet. People consume far too many toxins. They don't realize that they are. I'd, there's been suggestions that drinking distilled water can also open your pineal gland. And I think a lot of it comes to do with your energetic state as well. So we live in a, a system which is based on fear. It's all fear-based mind control. We're always in fear of something. Fear of not having enough money to pay the bills, fear of what people think of us, fear of the way we judge ourselves. Is this going to work? Is that going to work? We're always attaching emotion to outcomes and we're always in a constant state of fear. So changing that vibration helps a lot. DMT is a remarkable chemical because DMT is produced in your spine It's distributed through your body via your pineal gland, and it doesn't happen in most people because their pineal gland is usually calcified by the time they're about eight years old. So DMT is, you, what you'll find is that DMT is the interface that allows nature to communicate with itself. DMT is what causes instincts in animals. DMT active in, in animals is why animals will leave an area three days before a tsunami comes. It's why the, the shamans and the tribal people that live in the area will also leave the area three days before a tsunami comes because they can read the energy field. They can read reality in, in higher senses and in higher ways that we can't interpret. And they know that things are about to change. They know they have to move. But we don't have that because we are not able to access those realms. Again, a lot of it comes through our education. If people can get out of their left brain way of thinking, start thinking more with their right brain, which is very difficult to them because their left and right brain don't talk to each other because they're constantly subject to flickering lights and subject to electromagnetic pollution. So it's very, very difficult for people to awaken these higher senses. But 
Being aware of it is half the problem. Being aware that it's there is half the problem. But we should have more DMT active in our body because that is the interface that reality uses to talk to each other, which is why it's such a threat. This is why these plants have been made illegal and why pollutive chemicals have been made legal. These are things that shut you down more, keep you more controlled, and they also create sickness within you so they can sell you more chemicals. They turn you into a, a business, just a profitable business, because the entire human experience has been reduced to commerce. And we, we need to get out of that. We need to find ourselves again. Hvala, vrijeme nam je steklo. Do neke sljedeće prilike ili kada se opet nađete na ovoj dijelu, dijelu zemlje, na sjevernoj polutki, možda ćemo se opet družiti. Hvala vam na pažnji. Hvala još jednom Meksu Iganu u svijetu iluzioniste i programera percepcije. Stvarnosti svakako je zdravo ponekad protresti glavu, postaviti koje suvislo ili možda nesuvislo pitanje. Ne biti zadovoljno dok se ne privavi cjeloviti odgovor i sl. Kakav god on bio, jer kao kažu stare knjige, istina ćete osloboditi, a neke nove dodaju tome da ćete možda prvo i naljutiti. A u korinu svega ipak se krije oslobađuća spoznaja da je sad kod nas teh perspektiva. Korisnik jednog iskustva, istovremeno njegov sustvaratelj. Dakle, ne treba ići daleko, a sada, lako noći.